currently responsible for public affairs at Woman Inc. Uh, Odin Ising is also the author of the yet to be released children's book, My Mother is a Prime Minister. In her lecture, Odie will speak about the possibility that the United States of America will get their first female vice president if Joe Biden gets elected, and about the question why so very few people believe that women could successfully fulfill the position of vice president or president of the United States. Odie Nicey. Hi. Hi. My name is Odin Ising and um, yeah, for many years I've worked in politics or with politicians, uh, mostly advocating for women's rights. And at the moment I work for Women Inc. Uh, topics I've been advocating is comprehensive sex education in all schools at all ages, uh, access to legal abortion, or for example, the paternity leave extension in the Netherlands. And as a lobbyist, I have worked in the wings of politics, nice and steady in the shade. And but last year, my my director he asked me whether I would be interested in a political career myself instead of solely uh, advising or working in the background. And yeah, wow, that was um, that comment brought a lot of turmoil, lots of different questions in my mind. Like, can I see myself as a political leader? Do I dare to do that? Do I want it? And am I able? And to give a bit more insight in how a woman, and this woman being myself, with a sample size of one, of course, uh, thinks, uh, these are the questions that are that were circulating in the back of my mind. Like, um, am I 100% certain that I am qualified? Um, what sacrifices do I have to make towards my family? Can I still be a good mother working in politics? And also, what will my friends, or mostly my girlfriends, think about me and my motherhood? And will my partner support me? And how many uh, sexual remarks am I ready to withstand? And, and most of all, do I have enough power to swim at least some parts of the road uh, against the current? Well, Kamala Harris decided to swim against the current in 2015. She has been assigned as Joe Biden's running mate for the presidential elections of 2020, which makes her the third female candidate vice president of the United States of America with the chance uh, to be the first female vice president. And by doing so, this could be a great leap forward for the sake of the democracy of the United States, because diversity, which includes a better men to women ratio, improves the way that a democracy works. We know that by the scientific re research. Um, for example, it improves the acceptance of the elections and the feeling of social justice and cohesion in a society. And it shows everyone is participating. But, the great but. According to the World Economic Forum, in the current pace of change, it will take almost 100 years before the global men to women ratio is equal. One in five ministers is female, not even three out of 10 parliamentarians worldwide. And we count 21 female heads of state out of 100 uh, 195. In the international rankings of women in parliament, the Netherlands ranks 40, 41st. And the ratio is two male to one female, so twice as much men. So what about the states? What do you think? What will they rank? Will they rank better or worse than the Netherlands? Well, they come in at the 87th place after countries like Iraq, Cuba, Belarus, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Mexico, and the most of Europe. About half of the countries have had at least once a female political leader. The Germans had Angela Merkel, the English had Thatcher and recently May, and our Belgian neighbor, neighbors, uh, Sophie Wilmes. But the Netherlands and the United States have never had in their entire history a female president. Queens, we had lots of them, but prime ministers, no. And we did have female vice presidents in the Netherlands. The first one once started their position in the year 1998. Anyone who knows who they are? Els Borst from D66 and Annemarie Joritsma from VVD. But still, in the 22 years after their first appearance, um, they, there have not really been women 
that who had a serious chance of becoming prime minister. Well, wait a second. There is a, a woman, woman in the Netherlands who was a secret prime minister. Maria Laberia Peter. She was the political leader of the Dutch Antilles. So it is possible. But why is it that never there has never been a woman achieving the seat in the Oval Office? Besides, of course, Elizabeth Keane in the Homeland series or Claire Underwood in the House of Cards. Gender and unconscious gender bias do play a bigger role than you would initially think. Gender bias, of course, occurs when you unconsciously attribute certain attitudes and stereotypes to another person or another group. Sigrid Kaag, for example, she announced earlier this year that she would like to become the first Dutch female prime minister um, as a candidate for D66. And she has been immediately greeted with these kind of articles in the newspapers. Translated, is Sigrid tough enough to become our first prime minister? Kaag doubted her nomination. What am I doing to my children? Kaag, ex-diplomat still needs to get used to the Netherlands. Working in parliament will be beneath Kaag. In short, arrogant, uh, a bad mother, uh, inexperienced, and not a good, or at least a tough leader. Please try and be honest. Have you ever experienced one of these thoughts while she was still a candidate or with another woman being put up for a leadership role? Maybe Femke Halsma going for major, Hillary Clinton running for president. Thoughts like too nice or not nice enough, too tough or not tough enough. We tend, we all tend to be more critical towards women than towards men. And this critique comes because mostly because we do not recognize the image of the female leader. And on the news, I mean, you see lots of uh, an over representation of white middle aged men as leaders. And we need our brains to create order in chaos, in the chaos of a world. So we create shortcuts. And these are stereotypical images. And because we are unfamiliar with the female leader image, we tend to think subconsciously, of course, that these uncommon leadership styles must be wrong or ineffective. Stereotypical masculine traits, such as strength of leadership, toughness, quick decision making, are often prized over stereotypical feminine traits like deliberation, empathy, and compromise. The women candidates are aware of this and often spend a significant amount of time implementing strategies to offset potential stereotypes. These include emphasizing their strength and their capacity to lead in a masculine way and quick decision making. And for some female leaders, you could ask the question if they adapted somehow that masculine type of leadership along the way or if they possessed certain masculine traits as a woman that made it easier for them to achieve their leadership. Hillary Clinton has also spoken about how deep rooted the sexism played a hand in her defeat and about the double standards she faced. It may be good to state that sexism playing a role in the US 2016 election is not just a good feeling by, Hel by Hillary herself. Uh, it has been found by scientific research as well. Research found that sexist attitudes contributed to some voters' decision to vote for Trump instead of Clinton. Um, most of us know that Trump enjoyed an advantage among non-college educated whites. And that advantage was nearly 40 points. Racial attitudes and sexism explain at least two thirds of the education gap among white voters in the 2016 presidential election. And unfortunately, this has not changed in the past four years. For Kamala Harris, being a woman is still being used against her. On the campaign trail, she has taken on that question of electability head on, telling audiences, I have faith in the American people to know we will never be burdened by assumptions of who can do what based on what, who historically has done it. And she, as a black woman, even has an extra hurdle to take. McKinsey found that 40% of black women had their, judge, their judgment questioned in their area of expertise in professional settings compared to 27% of all men. Black women leaders are evaluated more negatively than any other gender or racial group, you know. So there we are. That brings us to the question, what do we, the Dutch and the American people, we, what do we need to do to get that female into office? Not just as a vice president, but also as the president and in general, to get more diversity in all offices.
Well, first of them, vote for them. In the Netherlands, stem op mevrouw. Um, and I would say it starts with our public opinion. So please be explicitly critical about your own uh, opinion and your own shortcuts in your brain. Question them rationally. Would I be saying this or thinking this if it was a man? And also we need to make it more appealing for women to get into politics. For example, on the local level, uh, digital meetings in the evenings for to, to, to make sure that, that single parents also can join. And make it also safe for women to enter. Make solid plans to fight sexual intimidation and violence against female politicians. 85% of the female European parliamentarians suffer from violence, mostly online with online attacks and even death threats. So I make sure enough women run for office. There needs to be active recruitment for women and also different genders. Just ask them, encourage them to run. Little girls at the age of eight already underestimate themselves. And same goes for grown up women. Um, they need an extra push. Someone who, say, who says, I see a political talent in you. And make sure that new female role models emerge. When you grow up in Finland, you see a 34 year old uh, prime minister managing the country. But here and in the state, you grow up with the image that these are jobs done by men. And create an environment where, so, so I mean, in general, create an environment where little girls can think, hey, politics, that might be something for me. And to repeat an earlier statement, this does not only lead to a more just society, it improves our democracy in many more ways. And train women also about unconscious bias and sexism. Let them hear this story and let them be prepared for it. And the bonus? If you start recruiting women, you also pave the way for other diverse, can diverse candidates, whether it be because of sexual orientation, culture, religion, or color. I see in Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, one of the few Prime Ministers who makes use of the strength of the feminine trait for leadership. It is, it is possible. So she brought her three-month-old baby to the United Nations General Assembly and in 2019, after a dreadful terrorist attack uh, on the Muslim community, she held a press conference as an agnostic to deliver a message uh, that will bring her citizens together, uniting them. Uh, they are us, she said about the victims. And she was praised for that in the press for excellent leadership. And the big question now this week isn't whether she will win this weekend a second term for her party, but if her partner will make history by becoming the first to secure an absolute majority under the current uh, political system. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, another example. She is approachable. She comes from the working class. She's strongly dedicated to building relationships. She is very feminine, talks about makeup, but can be a pit bull as well. And she has everything you would not imagine thinking of as a traditional member of Congress. And she is definitely prepared to tackle sexism. Uh, she knows how to deal with it. For example, when she started to dance in Congress and posted that on socials after a shame video in an, uh, was posted in an attempt to put her down. And in fact, we have arrived at a moment in time where the prejudices could be flipped around. I mean, in the global pandemic COVID-19, there are arguments that uh, the feminine traits could result in better leadership dealing with it. Countries like Germany, New Zealand, uh, Taiwan and Norway, they are outperforming in pandemic control and have female leaders. Coincidence? Unfortunately, the sample is too small, but it raises the question, could women maybe even be better leaders? And the, the other question that comes up next is whether the traits we as a society have marked as super important for leaders are chosen because they are important traits for leaders, and these traits often pair with men, or whether the traits have been marked as super important because they are commonly found in our leaders that have mostly been men. Either way, women should be proud of their leadership style. And role models like Alexandra, Sigrid, Jacinda, and Kamala are extremely important in resetting our stereotypical image of a leader. And also for helping women like me with high standards for themselves to make it easier to think, yeah, 
I mean, I can do that. Why not? And if, if she can, why can't I? And this is also why I am writing a children's book right now at the moment called uh, My Mother is a Prime Minister. And it's about a young boy with a superhero mother who is the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. And it's because it's, it's to give new generations a different image of the stereotypical idea of a president, to read it with kids, while we, in the meantime, of course, wait for our first actual Dutch female prime minister. So last thing to say is please vote and vote for gender equality. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Odie Nijsing. If I may start with our first question from the audience, why do you think, Odie, it is that the United States and the Netherlands both have such, you might say, an old-fashioned or, or masculine approach or view of, of leadership? Yeah, that's funny because we think, we tend to think, both in the US as in the Netherlands, that we are very, very emancipated. Um, <clears throat> but for example, in the Netherlands, it's we have a very strong motherhood culture, for example, and we uh, women uh, tend to work not very much hours a week, for example, we have a part-time uh, culture. Um, um, and so there are some cultural beliefs we have about women that are stronger in our culture than in other cultures like Sweden or even France or Belgium, surrounding cultures. Um, and the same goes for the US. Yeah. Um... Another question from the audience is whether female voters have the preference for a female leader. Yeah, well, you would expect it. Um, this year we did a research about it in the Netherlands um, with Women Inc. And we asked voters if they would vote for another party than their first preference, if it would have a female leader. And one million voters uh, would uh, do that. Um, that sounds a lot, but still a lot of people would not change party for a, a woman uh, as a leader. Um, but what we found is that 8 million people um, did change their, or, or at least uh, consider gender equality and the plans that a, that a party has about gender equality. Um, that, that would change their mind. So that, that, that really uh, is, is taken into consideration. So I think the policy plans are more important than who is running the party. Yeah. And actually, big... you see that both men and women um, said the same about um, choosing, choosing for another party. It didn't make any difference. Um, who would you have wanted to be on the ticket as a, a female uh, presidential candidate in, uh, in, in this election race? Hmm. Well, um, I think in my ideal world, it would be Michelle Obama. Really, she, she 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 ticks all the boxes. I mean, um, she's a woman. She and she is like Jacinda Ardern and AOC Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. She is feminine. She uses her female um, traits and her female power. So, yeah, I think she would be uh, perfect. So maybe in four years, as the, the as the president, she could she could be the yeah. the, the the fierce real president. Yeah, you you show you showed some you you, uh, you, you talked about uh, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Would she be an ideal candidate for uh, four years, eight years, twelve years uh, ahead? What do you think? Um, well, my personal opinion, I think she could be that. Yeah, she could be the um, the president because she is the real American dream. She is working class. She she made her way up. Um, but she's also a little bit activistic, so maybe too much of a pit bull. So if she um, if she softens a bit on that on that part, she might be a real candidate. Yeah, why not? Okay, we're talking about the first Dutch female prime minister uh, in relation to your to your the book that's coming out. Um, if it was up to you, who would it be the first prime minister, female prime minister of the Netherlands? Well, I see in Sigrid Kaag a very powerful candidate. Um, I think she is very inspiring. Um, a lot of women around me um, see in her a, a role model and she is 
I don't know. She's um, for for me. She she touches me. Um, so yeah. Maybe it will happen. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, Odie you never nice. know.